Okay. And we are live with episode 127 of the Beastly Thoughts Show. What's up, guys? We missed episode 127 last week, so we're doing episode 127 <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, if everything worked out, we'd be at 128, but that number's going to have to wait for another I week. I fucked That's it up a- for everybody. <laughs> We could hey, be hey, 128 man. right now. The, the, the legendary 128, but no. The future. No. <laughs> we're, 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 we're dealing in the past this week. Uh, we had some, some issues last week, but it wasn't really a big deal. Uh, why don't you tell people why we didn't have the show last week, Brian? Uh, I had to stream. <laughs> yeah, he had to stream. Yeah. He, he, he was contractually obligated to stream, and yeah. uh, it, it conflicted with our regular scheduled time. So here we are this week. I'm going to talk to you guys about shit that happened last week. So it's going to, <laughs> it's going to be a fun show. next week. Yes. We got the past, the present, the future. Everything we got a weird time paradox going on. In yeah. episode 127. 127 is a very, very important show. It's like Back to the so Future. This is weird. It, it, it's the drum roll period, especially if you're a PlayStation gamer. Some really uh, exciting stuff is happening this week, guys. Right. Yeah. You know, I, and, and I know that some of us are ready for it. Some of us didn't prepare, but are still ready for it. <laughs> uh, but before we get into the PlayStation VR talk, let's talk about what we've been playing this week. Who wants to go first? I'll start. I've been playing Destiny, uh, obviously. Wow. <laughs> um, Trials of Osiris. Uh, I've been absolutely. I've been having a f- good time with Trials of Osiris. I've been having a good time raiding. I got to tell you guys a story about a raid, though. A uh, bunch of my clan mates got together and uh, started a raid. Robbie, you were in that raid group. And me. Yep. yep. And uh, I, had to go. I was watching. You know, they were streaming it, so I was watching it, and uh, it was fun to watch them. They were figuring it out it was some guys first time through the raid. Wrath of the Machine, and I was watching it right. happen, and it was fun, man. Everybody was having a good time. They were making good progress, uh, and then it started getting late, so a couple people had to quit, and they were looking for a couple more. And you know, it's late, but I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll lend, lend a hand if they need an extra. If they need an extra body to take up space in a raid. I can do that. What a and, nice guy. Uh, so we spent the next couple of hours trying to beat the last boss, and if you don't know, the last boss has four damage phases. We were on the fourth damage phase. We almost had the guy beat, and everybody in the party got weaseled. Weaseled. Everybody got kicked out oh. out of the game. <laughs> it was like I it was the that. most heartbreaking thing I've ever Seriously? seen. Oh my oh, god, it was brutal. Yeah. It was just brutal. Like, you know, I came in late, right? I only spent two hours in there, but there were guys in there who had been in there for four hours. I think maybe even longer. Just banging yeah. their heads against this and uh we had it we had it beat you know we had the plan we had we were executing and we all we all start seeing the you know contacting destiny servers along the bottom oh no and oh, then boom the we're all out we're all out air screened oh, no. and it was so horrid it was so horrid God. Uh, so i wanted to oh. i want to shout out the milky star loins man that was a really tough one uh but it was it was super fun doing the raid anyway, and uh, we'll have to do it again very soon. Also, I've been playing Trials of Osiris this week. Uh, unfortunately, the Trials of Osiris map is not a good map. It's just not a fun map to play. So which one is it? I can't remember the name of it. It's got this like circular area. I, I just I kind of forgot. The oh name no, of was it, it the Floating Gardens? Floating Gardens. Thank you. Oh and yeah, it, that would be bad for trials. It was absolutely brutal. I mean, there's basically one area that you got to hold down, and once you do hold that down, it is so easy to camp in there. Uh, it's just kind of a shitty map. So I haven't been having that much fun. I've been having fun with my friends playing trials, but trials itself this week hasn't been that much fun itself. Like uh, if if you can understand the differentiation there. Uh, but I'm still having fun with Rise of Iron. I'm really excited for what's coming up this week um, with the VR headset. I'm sure we're going to talk about that later, so I'll let that go. Uh, Just a little bit. <laughs> and I'll let you guys go. Robbie, what you been playing? Good timing. Just sent out a tweet. All right. So this week I have been playing a lot of Destiny because, man, I love Destiny again now that Rise of Iron is out. And I think this is the most... I've ever enjoyed Destiny. Just the most consistently I've been engaged in it. Like, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, I've been playing Iron Banner. I got the Scout Rifle, too. Did you get that, Briar? Did you end up getting the Scout Rifle? I did not get the skull, Scout Rifle, but I got the Hand Cannon, oh. which sounds like it's hammering nails into somebody's skull. I got the Sniper yeah, Rifle. Cool. I got the I got the uh, Heavy Machine Gun, which sounds like a rapid-fire Sniper Rifle. I got the Pulse Rifle, which is a <laughs> beast. 
and I got you the auto you got rifle. Involved, man. I didn't get you the sky rifle, so I didn't get it all. Yeah. <laughs> now, but, but before you go on, Robbie, let me ask you a question, Barry. How the hell do you know what it, it sounds like to hammer nails into a person's skull? I wasn't Experience. always just a you know a YouTuber. <laughs> 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 Good answer. I gotta stay away from your state. Damn. Experience, yeah. Ooh, thug life. Go ahead, Robbie. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, been playing a lot of Destiny, Iron Banner. I got the auto rifle, uh, the unbent tree. I swear, like, oh god, six or seven times. I've had it dropped so many times. The shotgun a couple times. I got the fusion rifle too, which is really good. Uh, yeah, just having a lot of fun in Destiny and really enjoying that. But the thing I'm more excited about this week is. I got to play a very early access of a game. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. It's an old Call of Duty game that got remastered. You can play it 30 days early. I got to play Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered this week. Just the campaign was available to those who pre-purchased Infinite Warfare. And I gotta say, man, holy shit, I have never played COD 4. That campaign is freaking fun. That was your first playthrough? Amazing. Yeah, I'd oh, never played it before. Shit. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Oh, playing Until like you get all the multiplayer, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I cannot wait, man. I've never played that multiplayer, but the remaster is gorgeous. Like, they, it looks like a brand new game, and dude, it runs that it. sniper level where you're, like, track, you're, you're with your buddy, and you're going through all that snowy area. Oh, oh, my God, it's one of the most amazing oh, experiences I've ever so had in cool. video games. Um, yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah, I didn't I didn't play the, uh, the single player because I'm waiting for... What I'm excited about is the multiplayer for that game, but... Uh, Me too, I've, yeah. I've heard a lot of people talking about what it's like to go back to... Uh, all gillied up specifically, and it's like it hasn't lost anything. It's still a spectacular. It holds experience. up so well. Yeah. It is so much fun, man. I played through that campaign in like I'd say five or six hours. It took oh. me to do it, and of course, you get the intel, you get all the cheats. Those are really fun, yeah. and just graphically, Raven Software nailed this. Like it is beautiful. It looks like pretty much a new game, and it runs sixty frames all the time. Like I love it. It is. This is the best way to play Call of Duty. 4. Did you play Definitely. the last level with the plane assault, where you got to go through the plane and speed run it? In like a minute, yeah. Mile High Club, yeah. That was did you really get it. You got too. the Mile High Club, yep. I did it on hard, nice. Did it on hardened. Wow, you would you you got the Mile High on hard? It's that's hard. a it's, dream, yeah. It's like a specific nice achievement. Yep. You got to do it, it's really hard to do too. So people have spent you know months trying it, but veteran, uh, it's really difficult. Veteran is the Crazy. one you get the achievement for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's see, the tough. thing is, I I've never played uh, COD 4. I never played it ever. The very first uh, Call of Duty I ever played was Modern Warfare 2. I, you know, I was late to it. But I was actually referring to the real Mile High Club that actually exists. And I do I know that... I was afraid that, you were, and I didn't want to get into that. <laughs> so. In order for you to actually be a member of the real Mile High Club, you have to actually be hard as well. Uh, but it no does sound like... here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds no, like a lot of fun, though. talking about the auto rifle. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I am absolutely not. When you when you get a little older, you'll understand. But I'm excited about this game, but I'm really nervous right now. And there's a, a little bit of our news later on that we're going to talk about that I'm actually nervous about. And I've got to get concrete details on this before I can really get excited about this remaster. But, man, that sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. The question I had about Infinite, I mean, not Infinite, but Modern Warfare Remastered, Robbie, was did it did it feel like a modern game? Did it feel like something that was created for PS4 and Xbox One? And you said it, it does, right? It holds up. Yeah, absolutely. It's nine years old this year, which is crazy. I can't believe it's been that long. And as Almost soon as an old as you, Robbie. <laughs> I'll just ignore that. <laughs> yeah, no, it holds up very well. Uh, it feels like a new game. It definitely does. Wow. Like, I knew Call of Duty would hold up well, and it definitely does. Like, I would love to see next a remaster of World of War, I think Modern Warfare 2 would be amazing because I had a lot of nostalgia for that game too. I think it's going so to happen. Cool. Yeah. I, think, I think there are a lot of people, I mean, I don't know if it's more people who are excited for Modern Warfare than there are Infinite Warfare, but everyone I've talked to about this game is really excited about the prospect of playing Modern Warfare Remaster more so than playing Infinite Warfare. And I think that the pre-orders say anything about you know the direction this game is going to go as far as sales. It is uh, one Activision's of the most good. beloved games like of all times, one of the most beloved shooters of all time, right? Modern Warfare Four, or Call of Duty yeah. Four, Modern Warfare, gotcha. and changed multiplayer. The multiplayer has been essentially unplayable because of the hacks, right? It's really hard to go into yeah. that game now and play. It. Even if you have a 360 and an original copy, you really can't go in and get that experience anymore because it's been hacked to hell. 
So this yeah. represents like a pretty special event. It's not, you know, I get down on a lot of remasters uh, just because I don't feel like there's any real point to it. Mm -hmm. But with this game, it feels a little different because, you know, it is bringing back something that we've lost that you cannot, you cannot put in a copy. Can't get of, it anymore. You, yeah, yeah, you can't put in your copy of Modern Warfare into an Xbox 360 and play multiplayer. You just can't do it. It's broken. I mean, you can... And it's... You can get into a lobby, but it's it's a fucking nightmare. It's unplayable, yeah. And it's just, it's a special game, too, that really left a mark. Like, this was ahead of its time for multiplayer. It was an amazing game. And to bring it back and remaster it, it's a wonderful thing. Like, I love remasters of 10-year-old games that can hold up like this. Like, it's perfect. Like, I yeah. absolutely love my time with it. You know, they're doing some remasters of, of more modern games as well. Um, Bioshock, things like this have all been remastered. Batman, just a few years old. To me, remasters like that don't necessarily need it as much as something like a Modern Warfare game that I actually missed. One that looks really phenomenal as well. Let me yeah. ask you guys a question. If they do decide that pre-orders and sales of Infinite Warfare were sky high and, and did well enough, what Call of Duty do you think they should remaster next? I think they should go in the order of the Ooh. release yeah like next should be um next should be world, Black of Ops? War. world of war then should be modern warfare 2, two and they should just kind of keep doing them i mean it's not like it's got to be tied like on an infinity ward game an infinity ward game has to come out right mm -hmm. yeah because it's Raven still call of duty is doing it it's not yeah. like it's not like infinity ward is remake remaking odd four it's Raven, so Raven can just do one a year. <laughs> I mean, it's basically an infinite loop that they could do, but I mean, they're going to really lose is. my interest pretty quickly, honestly. After yeah, yeah. I think after Black Ops One, I'll probably call it quits there. As Same. far as like yeah, yeah. what I'm gonna buy, I probably won't even buy World at War to be honest with you, because I didn't love that game. I like I liked it, but I didn't love it. But Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Two, and Black Ops are some of my favorite shooters of all time. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually bought Black Ops after you told me about it because that was another one I never played. That's I bought still that playable, right? It, it it's hacked. It's hacked too. That's too bad. Yes. Last it's time hacked. I jumped into that, I was doing like kind of like a like a retrospective. I just went through all of them, all the old ones. I did it probably two or three years ago, and just like one video per day, I just played. I played Mod that. Yeah, I played COD Four. Then I played. You know, I just went through the series and. At the, that time, I did that. Black Ops was still working. I went in there. I got a helicopter right off the bat. I got that Black Hawk. I was like, mowing suckers down. I'm like, just like old times, yeah. motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Remember me, I bitches. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I, I know exactly what that's like, man. Every now and then, I pull out that Black Hawk, too, and it's very, very powerful. Now, uh, moving on to what I've been playing this week, I've, I've gone back. We're talking about older games. Uh, I've been playing, you know, kind of more modern games, uh, doing a little bit of uh, Overwatch. But I stopped that. A, a game that I used to play many years ago kind of reeled me in, and I was unable to leave it. Talking about Resident Evil 4 on PlayStation oh. 4. I, 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 I wanted to start it and show my girls what, you know, what to me Resident Evil was at its peak. And my daughter sat there with me and watched for like the first hour. And then we were there for three hours, and then I was trying to turn it off, and then it was five hours. And then it just persisted throughout the week, and now I'm at the end of the game. God, that game is so damn good. It's just, yeah. it's really hard to say anything bad about Resident Evil 4. I know that a lot of people out there have played this game, maybe some haven't. Maybe some of you guys think Resident Evil 6 is good, or Resident Evil 5 is good. Oh, God. But Resident Evil <laughs> no. 4, they perfected the formula of what I believe a uh, kind of uh, third-person Resident Evil game should be. It's fun, it makes perfect sense, it controls well, um, and it was just an amazing experience. I played it when my son was one. Briar disagrees. <laughs> I can tell. It, well, for the time, okay, Brian? For the time, yeah. Yeah, for the probably time. not anymore. Okay, because Resident Evil 1 play, controlled well. But, well, I don't even know if I could agree with that. But the controls yeah. have kind of, they, they were dated, and over time, they've, they've changed the way we play games. But in Resident Evil 4 on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you can actually play it in a different, different way as well. So you can use both analogs. It's something that does feel a little bit different, something new. I actually had to go back and revert to the way that I played it on my GameCube because it just feels too different. But 
it's a very fun game. Uh, it's it's just mindless fun. It's extremely exciting. And and as I look at it now, I'm thinking about all the things that Capcom added to the game: the ability to upgrade weapons, to buy new weapons. If you find yourself in a pickle and you got thirty thousand credits, you can buy a rocket launcher to change the tide of a boss battle. Just all these things, you know, upgrading the size of your your suitcase to carry more items. All that stuff was really, to me, it was a game changer, and and it's still ahead of a lot of the games that are coming out now because of the different ways that you can actually tweak the gameplay to your own particular style. But I've been playing that. Of course, I played a little bit, maybe two or three games of The Last of Us this week. Played five or six games of Overwatch, but for the most part, it's been Resident Evil 4, and my wife wants to go ahead and and beat Resident Evil 5 next because they're watching 4. So that'll be What's funny about that game, Beastly, is that I I bought that game. It originally came out on the GameCube, right? GameCube, yeah. I bought that game for the GameCube, and I fucking hated the control scheme like i found it <laughs> unplayable like i hated it i didn't i don't think i put more than an hour into it Ooh, honestly wow. uh and wow. then it got it got re-released on the wii the yes, first too. week and i bought it on the wii i bought it again for some reason like i you know everybody had just been talking 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 about how good that game was but i, I right. couldn't stand the controls i bought it on the wii where it uses an analog stick to move but you use the the Wii boat to aim motion control. I loved it. And it's like my favorite Wii game, right? Because it was so fun to be able to like shoot the guys. And in those panic moments, you know, you're using the Wii mote to shoot and to, you know, to do all this stuff. It was so <laughs> immersive at the time. I absolutely adored it. Um, but yeah, I could not even play it on the, in the original GameCube state. I'd hated the controls so much. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's something I'm noticing a little bit more and more in you, Briar. If a game's controls are ones that you just don't get right then, you're done. Yeah. The last of us, oh, no, not the last of us, say, yeah. us multi, the multiplayer. He played through the, the single player campaign, yeah. so he understood it, but the multiplayer was just a little. Well, was, it, it didn't make sense. Bitch to me. bombs were. Bitch bombs were a part of that. for me. <laughs> oh, shut up. Are you telling me that I'm the reason that you stopped fucking. I should have let somebody else teach you about Placing the game. In those little loot boxes? Yeah, you are the problem. <laughs> Well, um, I was literally like, I, I remember at that time, right? Is I was literally in the progress of making videos about Call of Duty, how so many people were using like claymores and, and like, you know, basically like bitch grenades, right? It's like, <laughs> I didn't say you grenades. walk into a room and you blow up. And then I jump into The Last of Us with Beastly and he's like, he's fucking trapping like the pickups. I'm like, this is the worst game ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Like, the fact that this is in the game, I don't want to play it. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, though, right? I, I think about that every now and then when I play that game. That's something I never do anymore. I guess over time you evolve, your gameplay style completely changes. I never waste my fucking bombs on that shit. No. But Probably back every, to the Res- player base doesn't would be fooled by it anymore, either. Well, you would be surprised. Yeah? You would be fucking surprised. <laughs> uh, but Resident Evil 4, for people who don't know, back in the days that it came out on GameCube, I beat that game over 40 times. You know, uh, There was no internet. Well, the internet did exist, but there was no way to play online. Uh, and, and that kind of ecosystem and, and, and community didn't exist. And so a game like Resident Evil 4, I just had to keep reliving it over and over and over and over again. I couldn't really reach out and tell anybody how amazing it was. IGN existed, but it wasn't a place that I frequented. It was like the only video game website. So, I mean, there, there were forums out there for people to talk about it, but it was too much work to get into that kind of community. So I just stayed in my cul-de-sac at home, and I played the shit out of that game, and I, I unlocked everything, and I beat every difficulty. <laughs> I was I was, you know... Honestly, I beat Resident Evil 4. I know it had to be over 43 times. I remember Jeez. saying that back then. I actually used to have nightmares about it. I'd go to I'd go to sleep and I'd see Leon running. And I was like, fuck. And I, I wake <laughs> up and my ex-wife would be like, you playing that damn game again? I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but How does the PlayStation was re- 4 version look? It looks as good as it can look. Uh, they, they haven't redone, you know, any, the textures are cleaned up. Uh, it, they don't. They haven't added any like new textures. The cutscenes are still the same cloudy type of uh, aesthetic they had way back in the day. They really haven't changed much of that. But the game does look markedly better. It does. You know, you can tell it's not what it used to be. The aspect ratio is completely different. It just looks really, really clean, but it has dated pixels yeah. and 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 dated textures. You can tell. But it's still just as fun as it always was, man. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. I don't think I'm going to beat it 40 times. <laughs> but but 
I'm gonna I'm gonna play through it and and finish it right now. I'm in a tough spot and 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 it's really really fun figuring this shit out. But Resident Evil, man, if you guys haven't played it, I think it's twenty bucks for Resident Evil Four. It's a it's worth twenty dollars if you guys are 17, 18, 14 like our co-host and you never had an opportunity to play I'm just Resident leave the call Evil. Now. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> You know, if, it's hard to never, find the time to play Resident Evil 4. There's so many great Resident Evil games coming out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to, hard to fit, repeat fit that, an old please? one in. Yeah, you, you, you must, be, talk, you must be talking about Umbrella Court. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking horrible games. Oh, yeah, God. Resident Evil 4 is, uh, when it comes to the third-person perspective, Resident Evil 4 is undoubtedly the best. Undoubtedly. Yeah, right. It was great. A, the atmosphere, the like the the change in tone and the change of like enemy check, type. Check this shit out. Okay, yesterday I was playing and my three year old. She said, "Daddy, why does he keep saying Coelho, Coelho, Coelho?" I said, "That's what they say, honey, when they see you. <laughs> you know the enemies, the Los Plagas, when they fucking see you, they're just walking real slow." Coelho, oh. Coelho, Coelho. <laughs> she thought he was trying to tell me some shit. <laughs> <laughs> But but it's it's a great game. If you guys haven't tried it, I would definitely suggest when you do have time, if you got a few hours to kill, you can it's pull a great yourself game. away from Umbrella Core. <laughs> yeah, that Umbrella yeah, Core, man. Great game, that's man. A great, you know, the thing is, right, when I first heard about Umbrella Core side story, I was like, ooh, this might be fun, right? This oh, has me, I, I kind of feel like this is the same thing that's going on with Metal Gear now. Metal Gear Survive, just fuck it. People are uh, like, oh, this will be good. And yeah, so I, well, they had it on safe. sale. They had it on sale on PlayStation Network for $13. I was like, babe, you know, oh, shit, Umbrella Corp, $13. We're going to gra- grab this. She's like, well, don't you want to at least see if it's good first? I was like, yeah, let's 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 watch some reviews. Oh, and that Lord. shit. I would have spent that $13 on anything before I bought that game. I wouldn't take that game if it was free, man. <laughs> come yeah, come on, poop. Capcom. You can't, just, you can't poop on your best franchises. I mean... Yeah, right now, I mean, look at doing the that honor they've concept. given to Street Fighter Five. I mean, they're clearly, usually they really respect these. <laughs> well, <laughs> Street Fighter Five is a lot better now than it was back then. I haven't played mine in a while, but you know they have they have kind of a single player uh, campaign now, uh, and, and just they've added a lot of new stuff to it. It does the gameplay is there. You know, Street Fighter Five's gameplay is really phenomenal. If that's a game that, you know, if you're really into Street Fighter, it fucking works great. But the stuff that you would expect in a fighting game just was not there. I think they wanted to get into Evo and all that stuff early and let people play these games at these tournaments. And so they they took that as an excuse to not add all the stuff that should have been in the game in the first place. It was just a really poor decision on the part of Capcom. Get your shit together, companies. If you guys got premium franchises, you need to treat them with dignity and respect. Don't just shit out stuff. And think people are going to go out there and, and blow their money just because of a title. Because a lot of times it's not going to happen. Now let's talk about the PlayStation VR. Yes. yes! Woo! Yes. <laughs> tear, tear, tear. Oh. What are we, like four He's days like... away now? Yeah, four days away. Yeah. Well, four days. I can't believe that, man. That's crazy. So well, I, I've been on the fence. You guys both know that I pre-ordered this thing as soon as it got announced. Because, you know, I at least wanted to have the option of buying it when it came out. And uh, I, to be honest with you, over the summer, I got kind of down on it because Sony wasn't talking about it. I wasn't hearing much about what games were coming out. Uh, but over the last week or so, um, NDAs have kind of been removed and play, people have been talking about it. And I'm actually pretty excited about it, this. I, I do think it is like a first-gen thing and uh, there aren't going to be a whole lot of games available for it right away. There might never be a whole lot of games available for it. you know. And I'm kind of willing to accept that. But I am really excited to get VR in my home for the first time. I'm really excited to, you know, check out the demos that come with it and the games that I can buy for it. Uh, and I'm hoping that enough people buy it that, you know, there, there is a reason to develop for it. Um, but, I mean, it's right around the corner. I am, I finally did, you know, slap down the money for it and I'm ready to go. Awesome. Well... Briar, you slapped down a lot of money. Not only did you slap down all the money for this, you also slapped down all the money for the PlayStation Pro. Yeah, the you Pro is fucking... coming out next month. It's a expensive couple of months for uh, for, for uh, Sony fans. Yeah. Man, I mean, Briar Rabbit is a baller, just in case you didn't know. Shot caller. Now, he's for a me... He's got money forever. <laughs> he's a, he's a... <laughs> now, for me, I made a video a few months ago called I'm a Procrastinator, and, and I am. Sometimes I procrastinate, and... and 
you know, it's, it, you know the feeling. I'm sure everyone's procrastinated at some point in time. But like sometimes I get, you know, over encumbered with what's going on in my day to day work, my office at home, my kids, and then all of a sudden I realize I didn't pre-order my PlayStation VR, right? And that's when you find yourself calling every Best Buy and GameStop <laughs> in your area to see if there is someone who maybe turned theirs in. And unfortunately for me, I haven't come across that situation yet. I haven't come across anyone, you know, I, I need this hundred dollars. I'm going to, you know, trade back in my trading. I don't want the game. Uh, and that, if that did happen, of course, you could go ahead and take that. But I haven't found the situation, but I did find a loophole at GameStop. So if anybody's out there like me, got the money, ready to buy it, just didn't pre-order, GameStop, after 48 hours, anyone who doesn't buy their pre-orders, they go back to the public. So oh. unless unless on the 13th when I go up there, if there's nobody, you know, who just comes up and says, man, I, I don't want the VR and I can just take theirs. I got to wait till the 15th. So I'm really excited about it. Like you, Briar, um, I was a little worried as well. I didn't see a lot of people talking about VR. Yeah. And like you, this week, I saw a litany of YouTube channels and, and gaming pundits and commentators talking about, uh, surprisingly, how much this thing works and how good it actually works. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd think with that, that $400 price point or $500, depending on whether or not you got the camera and the move controllers, you would think, that with that price point, you would get maybe a subpar product, but it doesn't sound like it actually is a subpar product. It sounds like it looks good. Uh, the the screen door effect, yeah, it's the most comfortable headset. That's what everybody says. I've actually wore it. It was comfortable when I wore it. I didn't feel like I had anything on my face. It was, and I got a big ass head. So to me, I'm already carrying <laughs> 40 pounds up here. And so I. Uh, <laughs> I, I put it on. It was very comfortable then, but now to hear everybody, you know, using it in contrast with the Vive and the Oculus is saying it's the most comfortable and there's no, you know, real screen door effect. Of course, it's only 1080p windows. Yeah. It, it sounds like it's, it's going to work really well. And it's going to be a good entry point for people who want real meaningful VR in your living room space for an attainable price. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, 100%. I'm really excited about it. I didn't think that, you know, games like Resident Evil will look as good as they do in vr to me that blows my mind that that's and and the, the thing that really excites me briar robbie is that the videos that we've seen are of this thing running on the vanilla ps4 not the pro so the vanilla ps4 is actually able to run these games pretty damn well and so i'm imagining what's going to actually be possible with the playstation 4 pro it's going to be a really exciting time for for vr i'm and it's a couple of days away i'm really excited about it I don't care what it takes. I'm going to have mine probably within the next week. I don't want to have wow. to drive you know, a couple hundred miles to, to pick up one, but I, I definitely am going to get it. It's something I'm super excited about. And VR is honestly the thing I've dreamt of since I was a child. Right. You know, I, gr I grew up watching Star Trek and looking at the holodeck and imagining that kind of environment. Of course, this isn't anything like that. And yes, I'm that old. Um, but to, to have a VR type of experience, to go into a game, play as Batman, move around, pick up items, interact with people, and just be inside of a virtual reality is something, Briar, that our generation really dreamt of. And fuck, I got a child that's going to be born when VR actually exists. Can you imagine what the future is going to be? To us, the Nintendo was the shit. Right. It was the shit. And and now we've got things like PS4s, PlayStation 4 Pro, Scorpios on the horizon, and these little kids are growing up and they have no clue how fucking good they got it. Man, you're to be completely right about that, Beastly. Uh, just this generation is absolutely spoiled, man. They're okay. Some Let's amazing uh, games. tone it back a little bit. That's exactly <laughs> what our parents were talking about when they were raising us, and what <laughs> their parents were talking about when they were raising them. Hey man, well, I, I think tone it back <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> tone that shit back. It's true, man. Uh, when we were growing up, you know, my dad he had the story, man. I had to walk to school uphill and walk home uphill the both ways, and that shit's not even possible, you know. I mean, oh, yeah. we had those kind of stories. It was really, really tough, and for us, it was tough growing up. And for these kids now, even though they got fucking iPads coming out of their assholes, they're gonna tell their kids that it was tough. It just I mean, is what it is. I had a job Childhood. when I was 10 years old. Literally, I was cleaning up poop in uh, out of a dog kennel. And I, I'm pretty sure my mother would have gotten sent like to social services for that. Now, yeah. You know? like, if that happened now, no way you could do that. Oh, now, oh yeah. Someone would be glad to pay you for that. Jeez. 
I mean, look, look, this is how tough it was for me. I was a gamer before I had the resources to be one. Mm -hmm. In middle school, I joined the Occupational Work Adjustment at Reedinger Middle School in Ohio. And OWA is when you actually get out of school half a day and go work. So I joined this program, but I didn't have a fucking job. So I bought a suitcase and a suit. And I walked the streets of Ohio, knocking door to door, yes. Suitcase didn't have anything in it, but I figured people would think it was a computer inside. And so I'd go, hey, are you guys hiring? Like, How old are you? Uh, I'm, I'm 13. Oh, no, no, we're not hiring. Finally, I got hired. I finally got hired at my school. I was the janitor of my own fucking school. And I can tell you, that's not a fun job when your <laughs> friends are throwing shit at you in the break room and the lunchroom <laughs> and you got to sweep it up. And you I, got I, no did the same, I had the same job, Beastly. It was in oh, junior high school. Seriously? <clears throat> yeah, uh, I was working for the janitors. I wasn't even a janitor. I was like an assistant janitor. Yeah, that same thing. <laughs> God, that's even worse. But I had the same job in junior high school. I was working for the janitors. Uh, I, it was only a summer job, so I didn't actually have to clean up after the kids. But I was like painting and waxing floors. Uh, yes. The parallels are unbelievable, Briar. Unbelievable. unbelievable right? <laughs> Wow, I mean, uh, me, I'd be sweeping the hall, and as I'd pass, a, a, you know, a classroom, the kids inside would say, "Hey, the the trash bin's out there, guys!" And then a fucking barrel of trash would come rolling out of the <laughs> the classroom into the hallway, and I gotta sweep that shit. But I it it paid off in the end because I took that money, my very first check, and I bought Donkey Kong Country on Super Nintendo. And God damn it, sweeping that shit was worth Donkey Kong Country. That game was uh, fucking. I honestly ass. think that. Because I started working at such a young age, it influenced my work ethic later yeah. in life. Because I still run into people who, you know, they're older and they don't have that work ethic, you know? Yeah. I think learning Honestly, that at, guys, in an early I'm age. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I'm that way. I really struggle with motivation to get a job sometimes. I mean, especially my family. My parents grew up as farmers. Like, their family raised farms, so they were working all the time. Me, I just haven't grown up that way. So they've definitely been on me about that stuff. Just like, why aren't you working? Why aren't you doing this? It's like, well, I get just didn't shit, grow up in that environment. Get your yeah. fucking shit together there, Robbie boy. Robbie, <laughs> I get told Robbie that boy. enough. So, yeah. All well, right. What's our next news story? All right. The head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, has said that this week that fans should not be worried about the price of the Xbox One Scorpio, suggesting that even though the console is targeted as a high-end machine, it won't be out of the normal console price range. Any guesses for what the price will be? Shit, man, four fifty. They can't got out. They, they, that's the lowest they can go. I think four ninety nine because they are saying this is a premium product, and I can't see them doing like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine. I think that's crazy. I think they will do just above what a normal console price yeah. is because it's a premium product. I think four ninety nine. Four ninety nine sounds they're... right to me too. Yeah, you think? That, I think that's a safe bet. Five hundred ducats. Yeah, it'd be great if they brought it out four hundred, but. Yeah. Well, if we're we, we we take into account that the Xbox One, which is like a twenty dollar machine now, uh, was four hundred ninety nine four ninety nine when it first came out. So the cost of that thing so many ways, yeah. And, that and that's kind of kind of the same thing that they did. The PlayStation did that. They released the PlayStation Four Pro at the same price of the original PlayStation. So if if Microsoft can do, even though that four hundred ninety nine dollar price, I'm not going to jump. I hear that and I'm like, am I paying rent or buying a fucking console? I, you know, I think I mean, that Microsoft would be stupid if not not to have learned from that price. That price is scary. Point, price five hundred dollars is it's too high. It's just too fucking high. And yeah. you know it. It's funny because there's been so many consoles that have tried to do that that upmarket price. You know, I remember the three DO. Yeah, the three DO was upmarket. Uh, Neo Geo before that Neo Geo. Um, you know, the, the original PlayStation 3, yeah. it, the stuff was oh. really expensive, and none of them, none of them were able to penetrate the market, the mass market, at that high price rate. I think the PlayStation 3 was the $600. one that did the best, but they really started to, to you know, gain steam once they it took lowered them a while that price. To do it, though. Yeah. Because, it took I mean, so, it, it, you know, Sony, Microsoft clearly made a mistake with that $500 price back price tag for the five for the xbox one but i believe that their newer management over there can see the, the yeah the, the differences in the the mistakes that have been made in the past and i i gotta hope they wouldn't make that mistake again yeah 
Phil Spencer yeah. has been doing an amazing job. He really has turned that company and that division around, and I have faith that he and that team are going to do the right thing. I think I they'll come so. out with a compelling console that is well-priced and makes a lot of sense and has good messaging behind it. Well, the, if you take into account that these consoles, the companies behind them make their money on the software. The software is really the, 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 point, the place that they want to be comfortable at, and that's yeah. why it's okay to take a hit. Initially, moving a console, you can take a hundred dollar hit. Yeah, they might even take a loss off this. That's a really good point. They might price it just to take a loss so they can regain that ground it, on software sales. Yeah, they I mean, could imagine, do that. imagine if they were fucking crazy enough to, to release this thing at a four hundred dollar price point to compete with the PlayStation Four Pro. If they were somehow oh. able to do that with all the stuff that's inside this box, first of all, you know these these innards are extremely expensive. But you know, on the other end of that, Microsoft is getting them at a much discounted price because of the amount and whatever contracts that they've they've created around this scorpius so they're, they're going to spend a lot less money to actually get these parts inside the box so they may be i mean that to me that's really you know reaching to think that they're going to be able to get it out there for 400 dollars. but just you know for for the sake of the argument imagine if they did release it for 400 dollars, everybody and their mom will go out and buy this thing like immediately i mean and especially if they want these things to be Iterative changes, so you don't have to wait seven, eight, nine years. They're talking every three, four years. It might actually work out for them because in three or four years, I have another four or five hundred dollar box out there for people to get excited about. As long as they they're moving that software, that's really where their revenue is going to be coming from. Not so much dependent on the consoles, unless like PlayStation Four, you know, forty six, forty seven million sold. If that's the case, of course you're going to make a ton of money on the consoles. You want to stay focused on that. But imagine yeah. all the other revenue that Sony's bringing in because of the, the actual software. These games that are being sold for these consoles. It's just, it, I guess, it all depends on the way you look at it and the, the direction you want to come. You know. But I'm yeah. excited for it. That gives me, you know, a, a lot of hope that the Scorpio is going to be attainable for the average, you know, consumer. A lot of people don't have a lot of money to throw away constantly. You know, it's getting harder and harder for me. It's like I have a fucking kid's birthday every month of the year now, right? <laughs> and, and then on top of that... <laughs> you got another one coming too. Another month to fill in. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, I got, you know, holidays and all these things going on. So I'm like, holy shit. I never so, thought of that, Beasley. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like, serious, five man. Kids, oh. That's five months possibly out of 12 months of a year. That's half a year almost for birthdays. Look, look, look. The middle of the year is really tough for me. My son's birthday is in May. My 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 oldest is June. Kate and Nova is both July. You got Mother's then Day get, in there. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> and, 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 and then Nina's, Nina's my three year old. Her birthday is like four uh, five days before Christmas. So yeah. Oh, that's brutal. Oh. Do you do a separate birthday party for her? Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. She's got to feel special, man. You know, yeah, that girl, she's she's so self-aware. You know, if she tells a joke and people don't laugh, she'll cry and walk away. Uh, so, you, I mean, you got to uh, really be on it with, with this little girl. She's very, very self-aware. And she's going to know that, hey, you didn't give me a birthday party and give me a Christmas gift? What the fuck, daddy? And, and what am I going to say to that? You know, <laughs> you got you to gotta treat them right. Well, two birds and one stone and all. You know, you know. If I don't if I don't if I don't treat my daughter right now, she's gonna settle for some loser who ain't gonna treat her right in the future. Oh Fuck that shit. hopefully not. <laughs> well my daddy gave me a week of birthday gifts, motherfucker. What you gonna do? That's what my daughter's gonna say. Yeah. We get to there you go. from Xbox Scorpio to this. All right, the price and saving Who up. Who fucking yeah. knows? Okay. This is so the Robbie, beauty my, of my, the show, right? You don't yeah. you don't you don't ask a how the beauty happens, you just enjoy it. Just it. Yeah, we don't have to question it. You just no. enjoy it. <laughs> now, the next bit of news is the, the the little bit of news that gave me pause. I talked to you guys about earlier when we were mentioning the Modern Warfare remastered uh, scenario. Yeah. Activision has confirmed this week that purchasing a physical copy of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare will require you to insert the disc in order to play Modern Warfare remastered. Regardless of which platform the purchase you purchase the game for, so you buy a physical version of the game, you gotta have that disc in to play Modern Warfare Remastered. Yeah, you can't sell it back like a lot of people want to do. You know, you see those comments of people saying, "I'm gonna buy Infinite Warfare to get COD Four, and then I'm gonna sell it back." Well, you can't do that now. This is definitely something that people have it's been DRM, wondering for a man. while, and now it's confirmed. Like this is confirmed. You need the disc to play now, Marvel now, Remastered, me... and that stinks. That really does. Now, if you do a digital pre-order, 
100% digital, meaning you get Modern Warfare Remaster and um, Infinite Warfare, it, it should play as normal, correct? Yes. Yeah, because I've been oh, able to play it and I pre ordered it. it. So you're uh, fine uh, if you're digital. Can I ask you guys a question? I'm not real positive on the pricing structure for this game. Do I have to pre order Infinite Warfare to get COD 4? I believe so. Early, do you mean? Or just no, to get no, it? No, just on release. Yes. You yeah, there's have no other to way to pre order. You can't just buy it the game the day the game comes out. And no, you don't both. have to pre order because it's an addition. Okay. You don't have to pre order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I did, also, and I'm not planning on it. Because I'm waiting to see reviews. That's smart. I think, yeah, that's a good move. Well, for, the the good thing about that is, see, I actually made a video about this a few days ago. I do most of my games digitally now because I, I want to be like Briar Rabbit. The, the fucking B Rabbit is amazing. You should want to be like Briar too. And so, Briar's like, hey, yeah, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> All right. And so I do most of my games pre-order. I still got like ten or twelve PS4 games that are physical copies but the reason i do my pre i mean my my uh, digital versions of games is because whenever you buy one digital game you get a second one for your second ps4 so and my wife has another ps4 so every time i buy a game she gets it and i was like hold on does this mean if i buy digitally that modern warfare remaster will only work on one ps4 possibly but it sounds like it should yeah, work on it both sounds like it'd be yeah. okay if you buy it digitally so that's, how, that's why yeah. i started really doing it too beastly because i had two playstation 4s one in the living room one in, in the office and mm -hmm. I, I i sold one of the playstation 4s just because i wanted to save money for the playstation pro because well, i knew it was coming so i figured i'd get as much money as i could you know by selling it as early as i could but now that i'm gonna buy the playstation pro i'm gonna put the original the office PlayStation downstairs. And that's where the VR headset's gonna go for most of the time, unless I'm using it to make videos. You know, so yeah. it's like a family thing. Yeah. And uh, well, see, that's important of... to me is being able to buy, you know, a game one... once and use it on either one of those PlayStations, possibly at the same it... time. Now yeah. on PlayStation 3, a lot of people don't know this years ago, PS3 had five game shares. You could actually yes. put it on five PS3s when the PlayStation 3 first released. So they if you reduced that though. They reduced it to two because they're yeah. fucking assholes. But at the beginning, it was five. So I was sharing with like five people. Hey, how you doing? You got a PS3? Here. And so uh, that changed. And now on PlayStation 4, it's only two. Now, the way that it works is, because uh, some people don't know, you have a main a main PS2 and you have a sub PS2. So what, with Briar's situation, <laughs> his main PS2 is going to be downstairs. Because anyone on that main PS2 can enjoy like the perks of playstation plus and being able to play online and you can create as many accounts on that as you want the one upstairs will be his sub ps2 and only his account, account will work on that yeah. one that's a and real pain in the, the neck too to figure out for the first time yeah well whoo, trust me because <laughs> when, when i first bought when yeah. i first bought kater ps4 i was like they better have some some kind of game sharing i had to actually call sony for them to actually walk me through it but once you do figure it out it works really really well the only problem with it is if you ever have an issue where your modem goes down or there's an internet problem, your second PS4 is a brick. You cannot play anything on it. It immediately shuts every game off. Yikes. Every game. Yeah, yeah. trust me. I've felt that before. It's um, very painful. I, there was a point at which I had done that because I had two PlayStations, right? And then I sold the PlayStation that was in the living room. And that was my main PlayStation. I had forgotten. No! Yeah, I had forgotten. No. So it was a real bitch to fix that, too. Oh no! Right. <laughs> and I was at the time I was working for Planet Destiny, and I was trying to get you know people would let me use their account so I could do a weapon review that I hadn't gotten yet, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do any of that stuff because I could I didn't have my main PlayStation anymore, so I had to go through a whole rigmarole with Sony to like prove I was who I was, and it was nasty. <laughs> wow. Good advice for everyone here. Yeah, yeah. don't yeah. sell your don't main. Sell PS4 your main. Don't out. sell your main. <laughs> Do not yeah, keep, sell that. Name. Sell the side piece. Keep the main. <laughs> that. <laughs> you, okay. I got that one, Brian. It, you know, it was now loading when you said it. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering where that's going to. But yeah, yeah uh, getting back to COD Four though, quick, like, dude, I don't know. It just it kind of sucks, right? Because like a lot of people, it stinks that Modern Warfare Remastered you can't buy it separate, right? Like a lot of people would love to just it, buy man. that. They're, They're going to sell it separately. 
They're going. They will, but I mean, right now, it stinks that you can't buy it right away. They want to sell. Uh, it. I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for the "I want it now" shit. <laughs> I want a deal. I want okay, a deal. Sure. right now. Hey, if you want sure it right enough, now, yeah. pay the price. That's the early adopter creed. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you only, if you want to, if you only want to spend twenty dollars on it, you just gotta wait. You know, it might be three months, it might be six months. With this and and the what? thing, the thing to remember though, Robbie, is this right? A lot of people don't want to do this. You know, eighty dollar bundle where you get Infinite and Modern Warfare. You already know what one is. We don't know what Infinite Warfare is going to be, but but it could be fucking awesome. It could be amazing. Personally, I'm excited you know, for both games. I, the I only am problem too. I have with this is what if your disc breaks, then you can't also play Modern Warfare Remastered, whereas you would be able to if it wasn't tied to it. What, why That's would you ever had a disc version. break? I've never had a disc break. No, I mean, no but I'm saying if it did. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, sometimes you get in those rough situations in the bedroom and discs break. What the hell are you but doing with those next discs, story, next man? Next story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, where do you put those? That things? is not a DVD <laughs> player. <laughs> it's hard to tell, man. It's hard to tell. It goes back and forth, but trust me, you don't do anything with it. It does not play a disc. Oh, man. Uh, so, Robbie, are you actually going to get the physical copy of this? I mean, for the physical perks, or are you considering just doing digital? No, I've already pre-ordered digital, so which I might regret, but it's fine. Was well, there <laughs> any pre-order bonus? Now. Why'd you end up pre-order? Oh, to get to be able to play it early. Yeah, just to pre gotcha. play it early. It's easy digital because there's no confusion to you. Just get it. So yeah. simple. Hopefully the uh, reviews come out on this game like a week ahead of time, so I can still pre-order if I want it and get all the digital perks. There's always yeah, like that, you know weapon skins or some bullshit. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> right, Personalization packs. Yeah. You know, I want a figure or something. All right. So moving on. This is kind of out of our lane a little bit, but it is a little exciting because I like new tech. Google has announced a number of new products this week, including a new line of smartphones called the Pixel and Pixel XL and a VR headset called Daydream, uh, Daydream View VR, which is designed for new smartphones. I love the so naming it's of these. VR. It's so good. Daydream oh, as, a, as a VR that's headset. Awesome. I think that's a great name, but Pixel for that's a phone cool is pretty good, too. And it works for, for new smartphones. Fuck. So... Google is trying to get it, man. Yeah, and you know, this is the first time they've manufactured their own smartphones, right? Yep, I believe so. They've released, oh, they sure. released Google-branded smartphones before, but they're they're always manufactured. Like, they had the manufacturer's name and stuff on it. Yeah, this is their time that It's just going to be a Google, Google Pixel. Yeah. Yes. And, and, I mean, it's not... There's no better time to actually get out there and push your product, especially with the atmosphere and the landscape of phones exploding across the country. You know, I, I don't know what's going on, but there's been a phone jihad happening in the United States where phones just explode and implode in people's pockets, burning on fl uh, airplane carpets. It's just really, really been tough for one particular phone manufacturer uh, these last few <coughs> nine, <Samson. six> months. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Samsung phone too. Mine's with mine, so it hasn't blown up, thankfully. My wife has a; she has an older one. She has the five, but yeah, this this new thing going on with Samsung, and then they're sending out replacements that explode. Shit! Get out of here, think, really? Like, yes, <laughs> I didn't hear yes. that. Oh, they that's sent terrible. out a replacement that exploded on on a on an airplane. It was a replacement for the one that already exploded. What? So it seems it seems like a contracted hit. I don't know if you know people are going through Samsung to get at people. But you know, there's a there's a politician or there's a guy I don't like selling this phone. <laughs> Boom! The whole car explodes. Shit. Wow. So good good luck, Google. You know, the pixel, hopefully it's perfect yeah. because right now there's some real problems. Yeah, check in, your in battery the supplier though. Just to make <laughs> sure that battery's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really tough. Uh phones. What has been you guys' favorite phone? First of all, Briar, I know that you are an iOS man. Mm -hmm. You love iOS. Robbie, do you love iOS or are you more in love with Android? Personally, and, and I love my Samsung Galaxy. I can't ever imagine using anything else. Like this phone I have right here, the S6 Edge. I know it's not the newest model now. It was the newest model when I had it. Mm -hmm. it I, this phone is like perfect. Like I love it. it disclaimer. Is disclaimer. Every phone was the newest phone at some point in time. Um, yes. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> not anymore. I, 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 I just for some reason can't do the iOS thing. I've I'm had, an Android guy, yeah. I, you know, and, and nothing against iOS, you know, guys. There's a, a young lady I work with. Leslie, what's happening? She's an iOS girl. And for me, it just, 
I feel like I'm limited by iOS versus Android, you know, with it being open source. And plus, I love my PlayStation phone, even though T-Mobile doesn't fucking carry Sony phones anymore. What's going on, T-Mobile? I mean, <laughs> oh, T-Mobile. Hey, T-Mobile. Come on, man. Fuck, man. T-Mobile. Yeah, T-Mobile. Fuck. Mahomes, I mean, I'm paying you $170. Get it together. It's bullshit. Big T. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm paying them all this motherfucking money, and I can't get a new Sony phone? Shit. <laughs> and, and T-Mobile was down, like, literally down across the country Friday. Oh, you know? great. <laughs> yes. I woke up. I thought, I thought I was really, big-ass crackers. You're something. disappointing just, the whole family, Big T. Get your shit together. <laughs> well, Big T, you're letting up one down, homie. Yeah. I mean, you got unlimited 4G LTE, but when that shit don't work, it just don't work for nobody. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's I've really, been, really bad. I've told you guys this before. I think we've talked about this on the show before, but I feel like at this point where I'm locked in to yeah, iOS because are. like I've got I've got the Mac computer in front of me. You know, I've got the phone, I got the iPad, you know, and all this stuff works together really well. Like if I get a phone call, yeah. my Macintosh rings and I can answer it and use like a nice mic and headphones, right? You know, if I text messages pop up on the screen or if I'm doing if I'm working on a document on my Mac, I can continue editing on my phone. You know, like that kind yep. of stuff, that kind of integration is like next level fucking awesome. If you ask me, except is nice. it is, except I can never fucking leave. <laughs> <laughs> You are in there. You're yeah. done, son. I am so trapped. And I see, you know, I see like the new Galaxy phone come out. I'm like, ooh, that looks nice. That looks pretty, ooh, that's yeah. It's nice. even got a headphone jack? Get out. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> wow, that's some next level shit right there. <laughs> headphone jack. Samsung is innovative. That's fucked up, man. That's really, that's really <laughs> fucked up that they took that away. Come on now. What's going to be I next? Doesn't yeah. have a mouthpiece. You can't talk anymore. You yeah, I use special... my headphone jack all the time too. All you know, time. like I listen to podcasts while I'm out for walks with my dog. I, you know, I, I listen to typically. I use all the time on my phone. These I are listen, wired like headphones. while I'm laying in bed at night. I'll throw an earpod in and I'll listen to a podcast or something while I'm falling asleep. Like I use headphones. I use headphones all the time, and I don't want to buy a hundred fifty pair dollar pair of headphones that are only going to work for my iPhone because. You know, and if, if I'm you using headphones those right now. If those headphones, you drop them, they're so small, they're just going to hit the ground and disappear. I was like, what the fuck? $130 for these? Right? Man, it's, it's 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 a crazy situation, oh, man. The crazy AirPods are so expensive, But, too, Briar, yeah. just, just so you know, right, I got a Windows 10 PC, uh, yeah. and I do have a Sony Sony phone yeah. with the latest firmware. Anytime I get a phone call, it pops up on the screen. Oh, that's Anytime nice. I get a te text message, it pops up. And, and the beautiful Cortana will come on and say, Beastly, would you like me to respond to your text? I say, no, bitch. Don't talk to me right now. She says, okay. And, I mean, the she understands. Get rid of her. You, got, you ain't weird. got time for that. No, hell no, man. <laughs> I mean, I, look, there's, a, there's only one woman that could talk to me like that, and it ain't Cortana. Hi, Mom. All right, so the last little bit of news that we got today. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered are a combined 130 gigabytes installed on PS4. Shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Infinite Warfare is 90 gigabytes. Yes! Marvel Remastered is 40. I installed it the other day, so it's 40. I can tell you. Fuck. Oh. It's getting ugly, man. 100 oh, gigabytes my. almost. For that is one a game. quarter of your hard drive. So, <laughs> so, what they're saying is if you had three games the size of this package, then that would be your the entirety of your 500 gig PlayStation. What the hell oh. were they thinking with that 500? I fucking been bitching about that since they announced it. 500 gigs. Yeah. Come on, man. You can go to Best Buy and get a 2 gig or a 3 gig for less than 100 bucks. Why are they putting 500 you mean gigs? Two, 2 terabyte, not gig. Yeah, sorry. My bad. 2 terabyte, yeah, right? That's Yeah. Like I got a, a 2 terabyte in my PS4, and that shit is full. So, yeah, I mean, right? <laughs> I mean, for what's real. The, what's the got pro got? Gig, the pro got one terabyte. One terabyte. One terabyte. One terabyte. Which is bad. But. It's, eh, it's still fucking low, though. Man, I, I can't. I can't go back. I'm sorry. I can't know? go back. I mean, it's like dating a fine ass woman, then all of a sudden you go date some ugly chick. You can't fucking step back. How are you gonna explain that shit to your friends? All right. <laughs> if you got a two terabyte piece, yeah, you new friends who didn't know about back. the last one. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I can't go back from two terabyte. I just can't do it. I just feel yeah. like at this point, that's the minimal I can have 
I mean, the Xbox has a really good um, alternative. Yeah. Xbox oh, One, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's a great beautiful idea. alternative. I've got probably, honestly, 12 terabytes sitting around in my living room. Just Ooh. hard drive after hard drive just sitting around. Just tons of shit on them. But so I got cheap. One. You buy them off of Amazon. They're so cheap. Yeah. I mean, you can get yeah. a 500 gig. You fuck right. <laughs> that was really high pitch. <laughs> you, <can get, laughs> you can get a 500 gig hard drive. For like thirty dollars on uh, Amazon or eBay, and uh, you can just sit that connect that to your Xbox. You double the space right there. I mean, right? It's it's crazy that they're creating these premium systems with such a limited space, and they know that even with, with PlayStation Four Pro, those games are going to be bigger than what we're seeing now. Oh yeah, I mean they're, they're going to be much fucking textures. bigger. So yeah. it's, it's going to be a it's going to be an uphill climb. Hopefully, with the PlayStation Four Pro space. will allow you to plug in a hard drive. Guys, maybe that's why Infinite Warfare is so much space. Maybe they already have the PS4 Pro version. They do like, have kind of installed in there. That yeah. is optimized for the PS4 Ooh, Pro. It's one yeah. of the reasons that I could be that. That's a good point, Robbie. That that's a great point. That's that Canada blowing line. minds, right? Man, yeah, can- Canadians, we're, we're that cold we're air right. keeps you fresh. You know, yeah, and that yeah. Canada dry. And today <laughs> sure, Brian, what do you think? <laughs> Keeps you alert. Shit. Oh my! <laughs> I'm looking forward be... to that, man. I'm I am looking forward to Infinite Warfare. I when I saw the the uh, single player campaign, I was like, yeah, I'm, I want to play that. That looks like fun. That as hell. looks really. What, what really is the fun. release date of this game? The the proper release date, Robbie? November fourth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a couple of weeks before the pro comes out. Yeah. All right. Well, well then you gotta make a decision. Do I want to play week. this game? Once on the PS4 and then play it again on the PS4 Pro so you can see the differences, Ooh. or do you just want to experience Ooh. it fresh on the oh. PS4 Pro? No, or do you just want to you... say, fuck COD, I'm playing Uncharted 4? <laughs> <laughs> Uncharted 4, that's another one coming to PS4 Pro. That no, is it is. That's why I said that. <laughs> no, the last of us is too. Okay, just no, I'm sure. excited. Now, now, Briar, you are you're on a 4K monitor, correct? No, well, I'm, I'm, my PC is... Uh, Your PC is 5K. Yeah, 5K. but the, the monitor that I play video games on is 1080p. I'm so thinking about getting a 4K. Uh, they're, they're not actually, that expensive at small size. I know. You know, I was at Best Buy yesterday, and I was like, what's happening? I thought these things were like $40,000. Mm-hmm. You can get a pretty decent size, one. That's how you use it. Well, hey, that's what women tell you. You can get you know, like a women 24. tell me it's absolutely amazing because of the size. You know, so I'm gonna I get, get an 80. Size, it doesn't matter. Oh, you got it all. You got the motion and you got the ocean. It's yeah, fucking you're great. Fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> you got the whole package. <laughs> I wish I had the whole package, but no. <laughs> yeah, but you can get like a 24, 27 inch 4K monitor by by a name. <laughs> That's a lot better Repu- than what I'm packing right now. That's pretty Repu- good. Repu- <laughs> Repu- <laughs> How's it always come to dick jokes? <laughs> it always, usually it's, usually it always it's devolves. Like at the end of the show, we're generally talking about penis. <laughs> it's, and it's usually me, but today, is, hey, Robbie, way to go, man. Thanks for picking up the fucking slack. Just got to make sure we're know, consistent. You guys hit Robbie up in the comment section and wish him a happy Canadian Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. They're going to have turkey covered with uh, maple syrup. They're going to have maple syrup covered with... Stuffing, good, right? They have corn, corn and maple syrup, <laughs> maple syrup spiked drinks. It's gonna be fucking insane. Oh yeah, and happy for a beer. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, man. I hope you guys have a blast. He was Thank talking you. to us pre-show about all the stuff that's going on in the house. I'm surprised you stuck around with all that those good smells right. rummaging through the air. I would have broke. Oh, I could smell the turkey when I was coming down here. I was like, oh man, I can't wait. Yeah, it <laughs> smells so good. So yeah, was- happy Thanksgiving to everyone in Canada. I hope you guys are having an awesome day and. Spending time with family because that's what I love too. Like this is one of my favorite holidays, and I'm very excited for tonight. Oh, really I think it's it. I think it's all of our favorite holiday, one of our favorites. Oh <laughs> shit, it's so going down next month. Yeah. I want to get that motherfucker cooking, looking like Edward Scissorhands. I'm telling you now, man, it's going to be on. <laughs> I'm gonna be watching football on the couch and waiting, salivating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's our bit of news for the week. Um, I'm really happy we we had a chance to get back and talk to you, talk to everybody out there. I'm really happy I got a chance to connect with my you know my other two appendages and uh, talk about the last two weeks in gaming. I'm really happy to, to to have gotten back together. Sorry we missed last week, but you know just like in your lives, shit happens sometimes. We almost missed this most- week. I got fucking sucked into Luke Cage. You guys seen that yet on Netflix? 
Man, I'm oh. too late. Like, you late? Uh, <laughs> I've been busy, man. I've, I finally got into watching it. I watched the first few episodes. What do you think? That show is fucking awesome. I like it better than yeah. by, than Jessica Jones by a long shot. And I might like it b- better than, uh, <laughs> Daredevil. than Daredevil. I haven't watched the whole season yet. So, you know, like well, I gotta watch the whole season. No, no spoilers. But the music and the acting and the storyline, awesome. No spoilers. I can't wait. In my opinion, it's not better than Jessica Jones. And in my opinion, it might be as good as Daredevil. To me, De- Jessica Jones. You like Jones Jessica sh- Jones better than Daredevil? I absolutely did. Your opinion doesn't matter to me anymore. Well, look, Daredevil has some <laughs> awesome fucking fighting. Right? It did. Really... It did. But, but that's what Daredevil does, right? Daredevil oh. is kind of like a ninja. Jessica Jones isn't. And I want to see the crescendo of her character when she actually begins to fly and all those shit. To me, I'm really excited about it because I'm a comic book fan. Oh, okay. Daredevil is an awesome, an awesome show. Luke Cage to me around the halfway point. I'll talk to you about it next week. All right, all right, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll do that it like it? that. All right, but all right. I, I like it so far. I was like, yeah. it's a good show. We watched it. The all, music all the way is amazing. I hope they like. I want to go on Spotify and see if somebody made a playlist out of the music. It's really good. Yeah, yeah it's a real, atmosphere. I love, I love that that club. How um, they always have oh, they have acts yeah. like famous acts from like the '60s, '70s, and '80s in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and they had some some hip hop in that shit. Yeah, too. I was like, yeah. what? But it I mean, was he's good. Wearing, he's wearing a suit, busting rhymes like that. Right. It was a, it, it, that was good. I, yeah, I'm really enjoying that show. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing how it concludes. I want your two goes. minute two minute review of the entire show next week. We'll all be looking forward to seeing that, and then we can have a five minute discussion about the show in, in total. <laughs> Everybody who hasn't seen the goddamn show, it's on Netflix and it's free. Yeah. Watch it now. It's I really, gotta watch really it. good. I'll do that. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to watching uh, Westworld on HBO. I haven't checked that out yet. Oh, I just saw the trailer for the new Netflix show coming out that's in the same universe as Jessica Jones and uh, Luke Cage one? and Daredevil. Yeah, it's Iron Fist. It's two of them coming out. Iron Fist is next. And it looks like it's going to be fucking amazing. I have never oh. even heard of Iron Fist. Who's that? Yeah, I, I heard of that. He's a superhero. And he has a fist that can just fuck shit up, man. He's got the tattoo on his chest. All you okay. see is doors flying. That's how he opens doors, okay? That's how I would do it, too. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> Guess who's here? Boom! Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry, Mom. Oh. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, it, was a, it was a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm going watch some more Luke Cage. Go watch that shit, man. <laughs> eat some dinner. Probably, turkey. Probably sure. go eat that. You go eat that maple turkey, baby. They sell maple turkey in the grocery stores down here. You know, it's sliced. But you guys got the real deal. Straight from the tree, that maple. Is it say, that's not the real maple turkey. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys bathe your turkeys in maple syrup before you kill them and cook them. Good shit. <laughs> Enjoy, man. All right, guys. Enjoy. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back next week for more maple syrup talk. <laughs> more Luke Cage talk. <laughs> Nick jokes. Something good. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. See ya. Peace. <laughs>